It's your bacteria that are eating all that. They are the ones who, who actually benefit from it. They utilize that to produce then all the good chemicals such as short-chain fatty acids, which will then improve diabetes, make you reduce weight, decrease inflammation, more restful sleep. So welcome back. And we're going to continue this, this talk and talking about now the bacteria. What do they actually do that makes us so healthy? So it's a very vast subject. And my of emphasis, of course, is inflammation and how it affects atherosclerosis uh, in the humans. So let's, let, let's dive into that just a little bit here. So I'm going to basically give you a schematic here of here's your gastrointestinal tract. And um, you have your lymphoid tissue sitting out here, the lymph cells. And these are all T cells and B cells and other immune cells. And there are other cells that actually sit right very close to the to the lining, and they send feelers out into the gut. And these feelers tell them who's there, which kind of folks are there, and whether they're friendly or not. And they, they talk. So they recognize these bacteria that are in here, and they send signals to the immune cells to say, hey, I'm a friend, I'm a friend. So this immunocyte says, okay, these are called Treg cells. They say, oh, my job, I'm a T cell, I'm a regulatory cell. That means I send a signal to all these other guys that, hey, when this guy comes along here, do not fight him. Do not raise an inflammation on him. Don't throw any bombs out at him. Okay. So T regs, why am I talking about T reg cells? It appears that when you have a paucity of bacteria in the gut or the lack of variety in the gut, Lack of variety of bugs. You don't have that spread of, you know, thousands and thousands of different species that you're supposed to have. Then you're not going to get enough T reg production or regulation of T cells. So if your T cell regulation is unchecked, then when a bacteria does get in, you're going to get a profound response because there's no T regs going around. You did not get regulation. Regulation needs to happen from a young age. That's why what the baby starts eating is very important at a very young age. Because what's happening here in the gut and the variety of gut bacteria is going to tell your immune system, slow down, I'm taming the immune system. So the problem we see today is too much inflammation, too rapid fire, too quick to draw the gun and fire. And that's what's causing a lot of these diseases atherosclerosis, inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune diseases, even asthma and the like. These are all overactive immune system. A good immune system is not overactive. A good immune system is one that actually knows when it should go into war and when it should not go into war. So these dendritic cells and other T cells, they have a vital role to play with the gut and the gut produces chemicals that affect these, these. But not only the chemicals produced by the bacteria affect the local T cells and B cells, they affect them systemically as well. So this is very important. Which kinds of chemicals they produce and which bacteria are producing the beneficial ones? So we know that the ratio of permacutes versus bacteroides has to be just right for the system to be balanced and you can do tests for that. And people can do stool tests and say, oh, your stools are mostly composed of this bacteria or that bacteria. And you can predict that person's weight. And you can even sometimes predict which diseases they have based on that. It's not 100%, but it's about 70% accurate at this time. You can actually predict what your body mass index is going to be, what conditions you're likely to have. But more important is not the species we're finding out. Because we're finding out that it's what, what the genome of that, viral, of that bacteria is making. So it's the products. It's called the postbiotics. The postbiotics. The postbiotics are the chemicals that are made by the bacteria that are more important. So they can be turned on genetically. They can be turned on through their epigenetics. Just like how we have our epigenetics, this can be turned on as well. So 
these postbiotics is what we should really be measuring. So one of the key ones that I'm very interested in is what is known as short chain fatty acids. These are produced by the very benevolent bacteria in the gut. What's it to do with cardiology? Well, these heal the lining. And we talked about it early on that if your lining is leaky, you have a problem. Well, these produce the energy that's required for the endothelium itself, and the lining of the gut itself. So it makes the lining healthier, more energy for it, and produces more mucus. So when there's more mucus lining the gut, there's a better barrier between the bacteria and your body. You want lots of mucus. For example, uh, Acomancia mucinophilia. That's a type of bacteria that's very helpful in humans. It's been shown to be extremely helpful. Why? Because it, it produces certain chemicals, including short-chain fatty acids, that increase the mucus production. And it actually even eats some of that mucus itself, so it's, it's self-serving. But with the excess mucus that's produced there, our gut lining is healthy. When our gut lining gets eaten away, by the wrong bacteria, you're going to get leaky gut. So wait a second, you're saying that when the wrong bacteria are there, you have very little acomancia, you have a lot of bad species over there, or bad products, the mucus gets all chewed up, gets eaten up. Yes, then you're going to get immune activation. Yes, you're going to get autoimmune disease, you're going to get inflammation. It's terrible, terrible stuff's going on here. And you can also change your epigenetic expression of other molecules, uh, other cells in the body as well, through those bad things that happen. So the short chain fatty acids improve the lining, they improve the mucus production, but they do other things too. The butyrate, which is the main one that I'm interested in, actually reduces systemic blood pressure. It causes, in the brain, it, it can, it can, it's been shown to increase BDNF. Um, BDNF is brain-derived neurotropic factor, and it can heal the blood-brain barrier as well. So the short-chain fatty acids are very anti-inflammatory. And the more we make of these, the better and healthier the human being is going to be. So can we identify how much I'm making right now? Well, this study is ongoing. Unfortunately, we don't have that. So we, do, we can identify the species. How did that happen? Well, because we me measured the genetics. So the Human Genome Project gave us the ability now to, in a matter of hours, you can sequence the DNA of thousands of species of bacteria in, in, your, in, in, in your stool. So it can be done. So we're identifying the species now, but we need to take it a step further. We need to identify what chemicals are being produced by those bacteria. But we have a pretty good idea already that, one, you need a diverse microbiome. What does that mean? That means stop killing them. You need a variety. You need thousands of species. If you look at the stools of a, 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 a Hadza, let's say, for example, in Africa, who's eating uh, mostly tubers and, and, and whole foods, he's got thousands and thousands of species of bacteria, and his stool weighs like two pounds uh, versus four ounces that the modern man is making. I mean, four ounces! What's this two pounds? But 50% of the weight of his stool is bacteria because he's making, he's making all that bacteria population very healthy. He's got a lot of bacteria in his gut. So we know that the more diverse the gut bacteria, the healthier the human being. You need to improve the diversity of your gut bacteria. If you're not going to do that, you're going to have multiple problems in your health. Move. Take a guess. It'll go from the brain to the heart to atherosclerosis to joint problems to gut problems. Name it. You're going to get it. Multiple sclerosis also. Even type 1 diabetes. All been associated with changes in the gut flora. You need to have a diverse gut flora. Why? Because the good take care of the bad guys. You know, sometimes when you introduce a good bacteria and you get beneficial effects, it's not the good bacteria's direct effect. It's because that took care of something else, that took care of something else, and then finally this species was able to then increase. So it's very complicated. It's very complicated. Because otherwise you're going to say to me, well, Dr. G, why don't you just introduce the species? Give me some acomens here right now. I want lots of acomens. I'm going to sip it all day long, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can't do that. 
You, you can't do that because it's a long journey to go to the gut, right? So it may not even survive that journey. So do I give a lot of probiotics to my patients to say, oh, yeah, yeah, you should take this probiotic and swallow all these capsules? And like, No, I don't. Um, I prefer to give them foods that's going to bring those bacteria in because everything you eat is going to have some bacteria in it. And then the good guys will stay behind even a small inoculation into the large colon will then grow it if the right food is there. So what do I say? I say, eat whole foods, lots of different kinds of fiber, not just one kind of fiber. Now, I do give inulin to all my patients because I think they're, they're never going to get any uh, lots of fiber in their diet. So I give them a soluble fiber called inulin. And the one I use is called inulin plus FOS. And what does that do? What that does is that it, it's the soluble fiber that comes from garlic and from chives and, and, um, and the like. And what happened? And artichokes. And it really, and you know that you're taking it because in the first few weeks you get some, some gas baby uh, and you start noticing more grumblings, but then your stool becomes softer, easier to go. And, and you know now there are changes. The bulk also increases it's from four ounces to maybe eight ounces. That's 100% increase in your stool weight. I mean, that's something. So you, I introduce the dietary changes. Number two, stop taking all these chemicals in your diet, like, for example, artificial sweeteners. So you can't digest artificial sweeteners, but guess what? The bacteria do. That's why it's bad for you. It's bad for you for two ways. One, the tongue sees the sweet taste and therefore already releases uh, uh, hormones in your body, and yet you're not getting the calories, and that's going to make you even more hungry. But number two reason is that the gut bacteria get demolished because they consume that substance and the bad guys consume it. And I told you, you need a good variety. And you want the good guys, not the bad guys. So you want to foster the growth of good guys, you need the right fiber. Don't give them artificial sweetness, for example. You need lots of omega-3 because omega-3 stimulates uh, you know, intestinal alkaline phosphatase, which will then heal your gut lining as well. So you need lots of omega-3 in your diet, right? And you, you need to have a, a well-rounded nutrient dense food, including phytochemicals, all the different colors of foods. They're not for you. You can't digest those phytochemicals. It's your bacteria that are eating all that. They are the ones who, who actually benefit from it. They utilize that to produce then all the good chemicals, such as short-chain fatty acids, which will then improve diabetes, make you reduce weight, decrease inflammation, more restful sleep. So how does, how does the brain know that all this is going on down here? So I'm going to introduce you to another aspect that's going on here. Okay, this is very important, that the vagus nerve connects in a bidirectional way to your brain. This is so important that the vagus nerve allows the brain to know what's going on over here because there's neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters produced in the gut lining and also by the bacteria. So, the ba wait a second, you're telling me that the bacteria are making chemicals? Yes, of course they are. I told you they're making chemicals. They're, that's one of them. But they can actually go to the brain? Yes. These chemicals can actually stimulate the vagus nerve and even travel up in a retrograde fashion to the brain. And the brain knows what's going on in the gut. And it then sends out signals in the other direction. So why is this important? Because the vagus nerve is also involved in the enteric nervous system, which is the electrical system of the bowels, so the bowels move forward and not backwards like reflux. So how do I treat reflux in my practice? I change the diet, and the reflux gets better. Why? Because the enteric nervous system gets better. All those nerve endings get better, and they start moving in the right direction. Yeah? They, 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 they don't get retrograde propulsion, and the bowels are better, they feel better, um, and the vagus nerve is very involved in all of this, in a bi-directional fashion. That is why when you are very stressed out and you're making a lot of corticotrophin-releasing hormone from your brain, it goes down the vagus nerve, it comes down here to the gut lining, and it goes on to the mast cells. And the mast cells release all the peptides, and then that causes inflammation in the gut. 
That's why when you're going through a bad exam or a bad day or a bad day at work or something, your gut gives you more problems because this is what's happening. The brain is talking to the gut and the gut then talks back to the brain. There's this big gut-brain axis. And that's a whole talk in and of itself. Very interesting stuff. I'm more interested in your cardiology aspects, okay? But how does, the, how does this affect me in cardiology? It affects me because I see a lot of young people who come to me and they have orthostatic hypotension or their parts, and, uh, which is a rapid heart rate inappropriate for their activity. And I take a full history and I find out why their vagus nerve is not working properly. As far as I know, I'm the only one that's actually working on the gut as a way to fix your vasovagal problems that you're having. So when you stand up, you get lightheaded, dizzy, your blood pressure is too low, your heart rate is too fast. Well, it's because your vagus nerve is dysfunctional. So if I can improve the state of health in the gut, which means not just the gut lining, not just your colonoscopy, because that's just going to tell me that your lining is okay and you don't have cancer, you don't have diverticular disease. I'm more interested in the function of your gut, in your gut bacteria, I'll take a full history, your antibiotic history, everything else, and I'll change your diet. And lo and behold, they come back to say, you know what, I'm much better, I'm not fainting as often as I used to. And my pulse rate is now slower, and I'm sleeping better at night as well. All these are incredible benefits by improving your gut health through acknowledging that there's a whole bunch of chemicals and stuff that's going on in your gut here by all these commensal bacteria in your gut. This is very important. So there's nervous, there's immune system, nerves, and then of course there's the endocrine system. The endocrine system, we can talk about hyperinsulinemia, but that's a whole complex subject. But my main focus here is atherosclerotic inflammation, heart rate, blood pressure, atherosclerosis, and how I can modulate these things in my practice in this fashion. So in our next talk, we'll dive even deeper into some other aspects of why the microbiome is really the heart of your health. It really is the heart of your health. So we'll talk about that next. If you like this video, then this one is strongly recommended for you. But if you want to see the whole series, please click here.